Hey, how you guys all doing? I'm feeling much better. Uh, I, mean, I gotta say, I'm probably 70% better. Boy, those uh, two days were uh, rocking and a rolling for how I was feeling, but we're back in this again. So, let's see if we can uh, do, we'll see if we could do one um, chess okay thing on uh, we'll pull up a, a board we'll do a one uh, I, I think I could do one but I don't know if I can do you know a, a couple like we used to do for right now so let's just do this one here Okay, Doki, let's get the Kings. now <clears throat> okay it's white to move, so both sides have already castled, so we don't really have to worry about castles now. <clears throat> we'll do one, and then I'll do like one game of, uh, or two games of the chess um, on uh, chess.com, the five minute ones. name right in. Okay, perfect. We're looking at it from White's perspective. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I believe, what's the chapter number? I forgot what the chapter number was. Let me see. Uh, chapter 8, comp, Compensation. So this is um, the section that we're in inside of Compensation Chapter 8. It's called Threats and Comps. Uh, basically, uh, sound sacrifices requires more than just positional pluses. They usually demand threats as well. In the last example we uh, did before, um, black, let me see, I think, was that the one with A, A3 that we did the last game? Says something to do with black, uh, in the last sample, black's uh, A3 pawn meant nothing with uh, black's threat of winning the A2. Oh yeah, that that's right. Um, this one was... Do we remember the one that we did? It was about two or three days ago. How we got a pawn to, they got a pawn all the way up to like here for white. And the pawns were like this. And they actually sacrificed their queen. And by uh, allowing all the trades to happen, they were two squares away from uh, queening. And so that was enough compensation for that. The threat of the queening was enough to win the material back the queen. And that's kind of what they're saying here. 
and it has to once black uh, basically acquired his pawn to a2 in our previous example um, black's pawn uh, through visualization and compensation and it was enough to win the game I think it won like a queen and a rook if I wasn't mis if I'm not mistaken I think it's the uh, this one back let me see I think it's this one back here let me see I think we even have it hold on is it the Pogar one? Yeah, it's this one right here. This one is what they're talking about. That um, Black had enough uh, compensation for the pawn. That remember they uh, uh, D takes E, Queen takes Rook. I mean Rook takes Queen, and then the Rook took here. This is the compensation, and the piece sacrifice was all based on the A3 pawn for Black. <clears throat> and um, that was the whole idea was to get this a3 pawn to a2 to a1 and queen and it was enough to win the game so that's what they're trying to say the threat of the queen was more uh, okay it is hard to uh, gen uh, generalize what uh, it's hard to generalize about what compensation you need is in a primarily in a in a position it's hard to basically what I say is it's hard to tell what you actually need in a position to con uh, to justify compensational sacrifices when it is mostly material and it and and when it is chiefly a matter of threats but pawn sacrifices can teach us uh, something. There is no material compensation when you give up one pawn. So um, one pawn. So threats and positional pluses are all that matter in that case. To deepen our appreciation uh, of compensation, you should look at master games with one pawn sacrifices. Avoid uh, mating attack games and focus instead on positional battles like the one we have right here. Oh, I got it. It is hard to generalize. That, sorry, this was the sentence that I missed. It is hard to generalize about when compensation yeah, you uh, compensation you need is primarily positional, uh, comma when it is uh, when it is mostly material and when it is uh, chiefly a matter of threats. So basically, that's that was what I missed was that it's it's hard to generalize compensation when it comes into a, a positional type of compensation. Maybe when it uh, has material, but we'll get into this one. <clears throat> okay. White can obtain a small edge with a with a quiet uh, move. Um, uh, knight, uh, but the, he actually didn't play this. So White actually played this move here. But if uh, White wanted to have a positional edge, D to uh, E4 is a positional edge, and after Knight takes uh, E4. Knight takes uh, e4. Uh, he is ready to play uh, b3 and bishop to um, e3. Uh, or our bishop to e4 after that. I mean e2 after b2 after that. With an advantage. <coughs> Uh, potentially what could happen is um, rook d8, b3, and then uh, d5, which is an uh, interesting uh, continuation for black. This puts compensational attack on the knight. Could be become messy. White can settle instead for more of a secure position with... Um, after this move, uh, let me see here. Instead of b3, if they, if you know your opponent's going to be playing this move, friends, 
uh, move out of the way because of course we know that after the takes rook here we're duh what what's our opponent saying oh yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, play uh, d d5 okay so if you know that that could be a problem just gently push your queen out of the way d5 is no longer a threat <coughs> and therefore you're good to go and uh, then you have bishop e3 and you're you're fine and you don't you didn't even have to weaken anything you didn't have to play b3 at that point so it's good however back here however um, white has reason to expect expect more out of his position than uh, a plus over edge equal position basically <clears throat> rather than um, you know like a point five which would be a, a positional slight positional edge like it would be in a like a point three for uh, and that's a plus over it's basically this symbol here oops where in the world hold on let me get that let me get this this is what they would say a plus uh, a plus over equal which is slightly better which is not much that's what it would be at this point would be a <clears throat> slightly better this is the symbol that they're talking about a slightly better um, game for white so knight to a4 he needed he needs the help of a uh, he needs the help of a little tactic that directs directs his attention to a threat threatening move. And a4 threatens the queen <coughs> and protects the pawn and um, prepares for the knight to move out. Uh, but what's the follow up to the answer? would uh, the answer and would have to be a positional decision um, like c5 could actually be played here too as well a positional push that makes uh, both b6 and d6 very vulnerable and unoccupable uh, for a hole uh, on b6 for the this uh, pawn push would help uh, acquire d6 and uh, b6. But there is a risk if black answers with uh, queen a5 because uh, c5 at this point puts a pawn hanging. When, uh, let me see here. When considering this position, white can um, m white can m more or less roll out all of black's rep replies, like bishop takes c c5. Uh, but actually, uh, white would simply have too big of an edge and no cost after rook d8. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me. So it takes here. White did actually play that. Knight uh, c4 to attack the queen. So if instead rook d8, d8 this would actually have been a uh, mistake for um, black. Because then uh, knight uh, d4 is. Uh, too strong of a move because then after there you you could actually just uh, knock in this probably more precise would be a, a this would be a more precise knight move because you always uh, make sure that your pos you you take your worst place knight and put it in to its to the best spot if you're deciding which knight to move and the a a knight on the rim is dim or grim <sighs> excuse me 
okay, so now we, we took there, there, and uh, queen b5 to attack the knight. b3 was actually played here. White felt there was enough compensation after uh, b3 exclaim. Bishop went to a7. There was an idea of uh, um, like if maybe rook here, the knight could take, queen takes, and then bishop a a3. So like if if you um, we'll say. We just wanted to support the pawn. I don't know if that actually works very good. Let me see here. <clears throat> Let's say we just support it like that. There we go. Then after takes here. Now this has more teeth because um, you have these two pieces. <clears throat> So there we go. Say he plays bishop there. Knight uh, a b six. Uh, rook b eight, and then bishop f um, f four. And uh, White regains his pawn with interest at that point. If uh, d5, knight takes bishop, d takes uh, c4, which is an exclaim move. But uh, knight to, um, hmm. oh, actually. If uh, that there, let me see, what could we actually do here? Let's see, and, oh, knight c3. Knight c3 is actually better. <coughs> this is a better move. Queen b, uh, Oh, sorry, not queen b6. That would actually lose. I knew there was a problem. Queen b4, a3, exclaim. And let's see here. Queen takes uh, knight. And the queen's trapped on uh, b, with b2, the queen is trapped. So that's why the bishop retreated back was to give the the queen this entire rank to move uh, across queen a3 or bishop a3 
<coughs> rook d8, and then rook c1. That sports the knight. Uh, let me see here. There's a couple moves we could have played differently in the uh, in the last few moves, such as um, uh, knight uh, d6 is an idea. But uh, rook uh, c1 is is more accurate. <coughs> There's also um, thinking it doesn't tell what the next move would be, so I'm not really sure if. Um, the next move of after rook c1 is. Let me see. Let me try to make one. We'll say we'll say we get we'll do space on h6. They're saying that potentially this move uh, here is much better of an idea than knight. Uh, C to uh, B6. Or if uh, this is played here, then uh, Bishop E, E7, Rook E8, and then uh, Knight D6. And uh, white won without much difficulty. The, there's a two pawn sacrifice, but surprisingly, it is hard to appreciate when uh, then when uh, there's a one pawn offer sacrifice. But there are some clues. The more pawns that you give up, the greater the role that a specific threat plays in a confirming. Uh, compensation and confirming the compensation so we'll stop here we'll pick up uh, tomorrow on our thing but we got one in which is uh, very good <coughs> so what we have to take away from this before we do a game is that you can yet yeah, when you give up a pawn you have to have uh, compensation when you give up a piece you gotta have the threat that's enough for that piece so let's take that consideration and uh, we'll do a game here. We'll do one five minute.
Oops. my bad there, I missed something. Had the right pawn take, just wrong uh, spot. Okay, we'll call it on that. Wanted to thank you for all all participating, logging on. You know what? Remember, choices are important, and the choice to receive the Lord Jesus, Lord Savior of your life, as vital as compensation, uh, threats, positional attacks, and chess, everything. So, take what you have to remember to take what you know and apply it, be willing to do something with it. <clears throat> and treasure your victories, learn from your losses, remember that mistakes do not define you, it's how you handle the mistake that defines you as a chess player and a person. And that's where the Team Chess Crutcher motto comes into play. We hang up our coats, we hang up our hats, we sit down and study when most won't. Team Chess Crutcher does, and that makes all the difference. And as Wesley so says, serve the Lord Jesus, as I say, God bless, and I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. We'll keep pushing forward. <coughs> and you know what? Remember what Hannibal Smith said. And even inside of a random position, there's always a plan. And when you find it, you get to say, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, two thumbs up, hoorah, be blessed. I'll see you tomorrow. Keep studying the chest, keep pushing forward, even if it's just 15 minutes a day, just, you know what? Keep uh, keep pushing play. Okay, two thumbs up, hoorah, be blessed. I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye, Team Chest Crutcher. Getting better. And uh, you see, we did one today. We're, we're, we're improving. Okay, bye bye. Be blessed. <laughs>